right. So just going over the problems that I was able to do in uh, the global round th 13. Uh, so let's start out with question A. You're given an, an array of only zeros and ones. This is the, the important part. And then uh, basically you need, you need to process two types of queries uh, quickly. The first one is you, you can pick an index and assign a value one minus that, 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 that value. But um, because the elements are either zero or one, basically uh, you can, this just means you, you pick the index and you change it. If, if it was zero, it, it, it now becomes one. If it was one, it now becomes zero. And the second type of query is that you want to print the kth largest value in the array. So this is uh, this is pretty straightforward once you understand that everything is either zero or one. And the way you do it is you keep a counter, you, like you keep counters for the number of zeros in the array and the number of ones in the array. So if you want to print the kth largest value, all you need to do is to check if the number of ones is, is at least k. If it is, then you just return uh, one, otherwise you return zero. And then for each update operation, you just, uh, you you decrement the, uh, the current value by one and you increment the other value by one. And yeah, that is how you do it. And so uh, if you look at my code, um, there's two, like how I handle the two types of operations. Um, for the update, I decrement the current counter by one and increment the second counter by one. And for print k largest value, uh, I all you need to do is to check k against the uh, number of ones. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, yeah, so moving on to problem B. Um, basically, you're given this this graph, um, and each row has a has an obstacle in it, and you want to move the obstacles in such a way that you have a clear path going from the top left and the bottom right. And to move an obstacle horizontally, it costs V units, and to move it uh, an obstacle vertically, it costs U units. And you want to kind of minimize the cost so that you can move from the top left to the bottom right. And if you look at the, uh, the restriction on the input, you'll notice that the obstacles cannot be in the first column or in the last column. Yeah, so uh, there's there's some casework to be done here. So uh, so so in the first case, right? Uh, I'm gonna make this whiteboard a little bit, bit big, bigger. So in the first case, right? Uh, like you have this grid, and then you already have a clear path from from the top left to the bottom right. In this case, the answer is zero, right? But you don't need to move any obstacles, right? In the second case, your wall is completely vertical, right? Now, to get from the top left to the bottom right here, um, the way you do, you, you kind of want to minimize the cost, right? So you're definitely going to have to move one of these guys uh, horizontally, either to the left or to the right. It, uh, like because there's only one obstacle on each row and the obstacles are between the first and last columns. It, 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 it doesn't matter if you move it left or right, um, because like if you can't move it right, you can always move it left, and uh, and so on. And the cost is the same, right? So you're going to need to move this left, and that costs V units. So X goes here, but um, it's still blocking the path, right? So then, at this point, you can either move it left again, or Right again, if if you're um, if you're at the edge, which costs v units, or you can move it up or down, either of which costs u units. And if you want to minimize the cost, this is basically uh, the best you can do, right? One horizontal movement and either another horizontal movement or a vertical movement. And so, yeah. So it, in this case, the answer it just becomes uh, the the minimum of uh, v plus u, comma, v plus v, or 2v. Cool. And so there's one more case, which is uh, the following. Uh, if, 
if your obstacles are blocking, but it's not vertical, right? Let's say it looks something like this, right? In this case, um, you can you can you basically have two choices, right? You can pick one and either move it up, which would cost v units, or you can pick one and either move it to the side, which will cost u units. And no matter what this wall looks like, um, there's always going to be something which is like protruding outwards. And at and like we know this is true because otherwise, like it would fall into case two, right? So basically, uh, like we just need to find that one thing which is protruding outwards and uh, basically pick the minimum of moving it up or moving it to the to to the uh, right. And sorry, this is uh, V and going upwards is U. This is U, this is V. So in this case, the answer is just uh, the minimum of U comma V. And yeah, that's, uh, that's basically how you do it. I'll uh, show my code. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the the main thing is first I check to see if there is an obstacle. Uh, practically, what that means is that every the the, the column of each obstacle of, of like of, of of obstacles in consecutive rows must differ by at most one. Um, and And yeah, and uh, I I also keep a an unordered set to see like uh, where like in what column each each obstacle is in. If 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 each obstacle is only in one column, we you know we're in case two, which in which in that case we can just return uh, the minimum of v plus v comma v plus u. Otherwise, we we know we're in case three, in which you in which case you just return min of u comma v. Yeah, uh, that's that's basically it. Um, finally, let's go on to uh, shoe problem D. Uh, so basically, uh, what this problem says is, let me get my my my, my whiteboard. Uh, so what this problem says is that um, you kind of have an infinite graph of, of numbers, and then uh, it it, it kind of gives you like what. Um, so, uh, like the graph is directed, and it gives you a, a condition for which uh, two 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 edges are sorry two vertices are connected by a directed edge, and so uh, the condition they gave you is um, uh, u plus v. Yeah, so uh, u has an edge. So, like, sorry, u is connected to v. Sorry, u is connected to u plus v if and only if uh, u bitwise and v is equal to v, right? And so you're given uh, so you're given two integers like u and v, or let's call these integers a and b, right? A and b, um, and you want to return yes if you can go from a to b in this graph. Otherwise, you want to return no. Uh, that's basically the, uh, the 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 concept of this problem. And uh, yeah, so the way you do this is basically uh, you look at you have to have a clear understanding of how bitwise and works basically. So let's write down a a number in binary. Let's say this is u and v is uh, okay. Let's say that v can be anything, right? So first of all, let's look at this, right? When is u bitwise and v equal to v, right? So let's say I just have a one here, and these are all zeros, right? Clearly, u bitwise and v is just gonna be all zeros, right? Furthermore, if I have a one anywhere where there is a zero in, in u. So if I put a one here, it, it's it's gonna get set to zero in u bitwise and v for, for any of these values, right? 
the only case where u where u bitwise m v is equal to v is when both u and v have set ones, right? In that in that place. So here is an example where u bitwise m v is equal to v, right? Because th these are the only place where where there are ones, right? So in general, um, the first observation to make is that kind of um, v's set v's set bit must be a strict subset of u's. Let me write that down. V's set bits must be a strict subset of U's, right? Yeah. So, um, because of this, we can add on another if and only if here. So u bitwise and v is equal to v if and only if v set bits uh, are a strict subset of u's. OK, so that's kind of like the, 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 the first insight, right? And then, but um, so we're not done yet because uh, like this condition where u bitwise and v is equal to v uh, does not mean that two that two edges are uh, are 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 actually so, sorry does not mean that two vertices are actually connected. It just means that uh, u is connected to u plus v. But then, um, like if we look at this u, right? The next thing that we uh, kind of like the next insight that we have is it, it is basically the the uh, the following is that basically the only v's that we can add to u, right? Uh, basically, the, the only v's that we can add to u are either this, 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 like uh, this. So like, yeah, and so on. So they're either... Uh, like integers where uh, like you have the first set bit equal to a set bit of u and then everything else is zero or a linear combination of such. And also when we uh, like when we add one of these guys to u, then basically what that does is it so like let's say we add this guy to u, right? Basically what that does, what we get is the same thing as you, except the uh, the one has been moved over, right? So kind of the second insight that that, that we need here is um, starting from you, we can shift set bits to the right. And basically, that's all we need. And so, basically, the idea is that you're like you start with you, and you're allowed to shift set bits to the right because, sorry, not to the right, to the left, because that corresponds to adding adding v such that u bitwise and v is equal to v, right? And so, basically, um, like if if v was something like this, you know that the answer is uh, like u and v are connected. Why? Because you can, like, uh, using this uh, the second observ observation, you can shift all set bits to the to the left until they exactly equal um, v's set bits. And so basically, the question becomes, uh, given u and v, can I shift u's bits to the right, sorry, to the left, such that they equal v's set bits? And uh, that is a much easier question to solve, because basically, 
in an algorithm to solve this is that you basically start off from the from the least significant bit and go and go to the left and count use set bits and count like like, like how many set bits are in u versus how many set bits are in v and if uh, and if u set bits are always greater than or equal to v set bits then you're good yeah, uh, so let me write that down real fast. Uh, so basically, start from least significant bit, go left, count set bits, and ensure uh, use set bits are always greater than or equal to B set bits. Yeah, and that's basically it. And uh, and the final thing to uh, the final case is that um, if uh, so the final thing that we didn't talk about is if v is uh, sorry if if, if u is uh, okay you, you want to find if there's an edge between u and v so if v is less than u the answer is just no because um, like each edge only has a directed edge to things to to, to edges that are, that are greater than it. So if u is greater than v or v is less than u, the answer is just no because there's um, there's no way that u has the edge to v. Yeah. So that's basically the idea. Um, I'll show my code. Uh, so basically, uh, if they're the same then you just return true. If u is greater than v, then you return false. Otherwise, you start from the least significant bit and go backwards. Uh, you count how many set bits each number has. If at, at any point uh, v has more set bits than u, then there's no way that you can shift bits to the left. There's no way that you can shift u's bits to the left such that they equal v, so you just return False here, otherwise you just return true. Yeah, uh, that's basically it. Thanks for watching.